we are going to talk about geometric means. And a geometric means not only shows up in a proportion, but it shows up in a specific type of right triangle when they draw in an altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse. In a proportion, there's four parts. We talked about this even before today. These two parts, the first part and the last part, are your extremes. And the two middle pieces are your means. If the means are equal, in other words, if I said this mean was x, this mean would also be what? If this is x, this would also be what? x. If they're equal, then that is called a geometric means. So in these first examples, they're asking me to find the geometric mean between two numbers. If they're asking me to find the means, the geometric means, what am I going to put where the two means are? They're asking me to find it, so what am I going to put there? X. X. And what's going to fill in then the two spots that take up the extreme? 6 and 15. <coughs> and we simply would cross multiply. X times X is X squared. And 6 times 15 is 90. The opposite of squaring something is what? Square root. So x is equal to, and rather than simplifying the radical in this class, you are simply going to take that square root of 90. You're going to put it in your calculator, and we're going to round to the nearest hundredth. In other words, we're going to go two decimal places behind the decimal. This would be 9.49. It's 486, but we're going to round up because the 6 is going to make that round up. <coughs> Questions on where I came up with 9.49? In the next example, they again asked me to find the geometric mean. So I set up a proportion. And what do I put in the two places where the mean would go? X. And what's going to fill in the other two places then? 4 and 18. And again, we would cross multiply. X times X gives me X squared. 4 times 18, 72. The opposite of squaring something is finding its square root. And you are simply going to put that in your calculator. And you're going to get 8.4 what? 8.49. The third example is just a little bit different. In fact, I would say it's easier. Because here they said 36 was what? The geometric mean. What does that mean about my 36? It's going to go in my proportion in two places because the geometric mean shows up twice. And it said it's a geometric mean between 12 and what number? 12 and x. And we would cross multiply. 12 times x, 12x. 36 times 36, 1,296. And to get it x by itself, instead of taking a square root this time, we're going to divide both sides by 
12. And we're going to get 108. Okay, but we're going to put it in we're going to put it in a triangle in just a second. But the concept is the same. The geometric mean shows up how many times? Twice. If you can identify the geometric mean, that's the key. So, we're going to talk about why it's a geometric mean and how you can tell and even if you couldn't identify it as geometric mean, how you might be able to set up a proportion without recognizing it. The reason for learning that it's a geometric mean is because it's quicker than setting up the proportions and separating out triangles. When you start out with a right triangle and you draw an altitude in from the right angle to the hypotenuse, you end up with three similar triangles. So I'm going to draw this triangle. I'm going to draw it over here. And then I'm going to draw the triangle that's on the right. I'm going to draw it over here. But I'm going to rotate or flip them so they look the same as my original triangle. So things that are corresponding would be lined up. Okay. So if th things are corresponding are going to be lined up, what's got to be at the top when I draw it out? Okay. The right angle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two right triangles that look like they're in the same relationship as what's here. Okay? Now, keep in mind that the pink one is the one that I've drawn over here. And the gray one is the one that I've drawn on the right. H is where the right angle is. So I'm going to label H in both of them. Does everybody see that H is the right angle in both of those triangles? Right? Notice that in the pink triangle, angle A is in the pink triangle, but it's also in the whole triangle. So I know wherever A is, it's got to be the same. So this must be A, which means the other point in the pink triangle is going to be D. And it would look like that. Why do I know then the pink triangle is similar to the whole triangle? Angle, angle, similarity. Does everybody see it? I'm going to go to the gray triangle now. And you'll notice in the gray triangle, E is not only in the gray triangle, but it's in the whole triangle, which means this represents E, and it means the other point of this triangle is D. Why do I know the gray triangle then is similar to the whole triangle. Angle, angle, similarity. In fact, all three triangles are similar to each other. And I'm going to start out with the main triangle. The original triangle was A, D, E. In the pink triangle, what's got to correspond to A? In the pink triangle, okay. what's got to correspond to A? A. What's got to correspond to D where the right angle was? H. And that means the last one of these is D. Everybody with me? And again, by keeping the relationship the same, A, D, E, you can see that it had to go A, H, D. What's the third triangle going to be? If I go A, D, E, this one's got to go D, H, E. 
So all three of these triangles are similar to each other. And you will notice what happens is AH is not only in this triangle, but AH is this pink part of the whole triangle. Does everybody see that? DH is in both of the two smaller triangles. And then when I look at uh, HE, HE is not only in the small gray triangle, but it's part of the whole triangle. So you can see something's going to show up twice, and if it shows up twice in a proportion, it becomes a what? If the exact same thing shows up twice in the proportion, it's a what? Geometric mean. That's the reason we talked about the geometric mean to start with. So now we're going to look at how that relates to the triangle itself. Where this B is, B, and I'm going to abbreviate geometric mean just as GM. B is a geometric mean. If B is a geometric mean, I'm going to put it where the means belong in my proportion. And it's a geometric mean between the two parts of the hypotenuse that were created. So what's going to fill in the other two places? A and C. B, the altitude that we drew in, is a geometric mean between the two parts that were <coughs> created when I drew that altitude in. And the reason it's a geometric mean is because it's not only in the triangle that's on the right, it's also in the triangle that's on the left. That's why it works. The other two geometric means were legs of the original triangle. So D is also a geometric mean. And I'm going to put it in my proportion twice. D is a geometric mean between the part of the hypotenuse it is closest to, A, and the entire hypotenuse, F. Now, if I go back and I look at my triangle here, what is F actually equal to? What is F equal to? So down here I could also think of this as A plus C. It's easier once we put numbers in it. It looks a little more difficult when we're dealing with nothing but variables. Okay. If D, one of the legs, was a geometric mean, then E is also a what? Geometric mean. Okay. So I'm going to put E in my proportion twice. D was a geometric mean between what it was closest to. What is E going to be a geometric mean between? C. C. And D was a geometric mean between it and the whole hypotenuse. So E is a geometric mean between what it's closest to and what? F, the whole hypotenuse. And remember, F could be thought of as A plus C. When we draw an altitude in, the altitude is a geometric mean between the two parts of the hypotenuse. The original leg is a geometric mean between what it's adjacent to and the whole hypotenuse, which means the other leg is a geometric mean between what it's adjacent to and the whole hypotenuse. 
So now we're going to look at what it looks like when we put it into a triangle where they've given us some numbers. We're just going to apply it. So this first one that says example 4. What is W? W is a what? Geometric mean. If W is a geometric mean, when I go to set up my proportion, W is going to go in my proportion twice. What is W a geometric mean between? Six and four, the two parts of the hypotenuse that were created. Now we're just going to simply cross multiply. W times W is? W squared. 6 times 4 is? 24. And the opposite of squaring something is finding its square root. And so W is equal to, and the square root of 24, 12.898. Let's talk about that for a minute. That's going to make this round up to what? A 10, so we would write 12.90. Oh, I'm sorry, 4.90. This is a 4. I don't know why I got the 12. Yeah, it came out 4.898, right? So this is going to round to 4.9. Zero. Everybody okay? X is a leg of the original right triangle. What is X? It's a geometric mean. So when I set up the proportion, X is going to be in it twice. It's a geometric mean between 4, the part it's closest to, and what? 10. 10, the whole thing. Remember, I've got to add those two pieces together. And we cross multiply. x squared is equal to 40. And the opposite of squaring it is finding its square root. So the square root of 40, 6.32. What is y? It's a geometric mean, so when I set up my proportion, it's going to show up twice. What's it a geometric mean between? Six, the part that it's adjacent to, and ten, because I've got to add the whole thing together. Again, we cross multiply y times y y squared, 6 times 10, 60, the opposite of squaring something, finding its square root. So y is equal to the square root of 60, 7.75. good that far? Sometimes they put more than one variable into a problem. When they do that, you've got to decide which piece is going to be the easiest to work with. Notice they didn't give me anything on the altitude here. If I worked with x, it would have a y and it would have 36 in it. I certainly don't want to have two variables. 
So let's come over here and work with 18. What is 18 in this case? It's the geometric mean. Okay? Which means the 18 is going to get written down what? Twice. What is 18 a geometric mean between? W and 36. So again, we cross multiply. I have 36W <coughs> is equal to 324. And I divide by 36. And I get W is 9. Now, I'm going to put W equals 9 in my picture. Do we have to use a geometric mean to find y? How can I find y at this point? 36 minus what? 9. Which is 27. And I'm going to put that in my picture as well. What is x? It's a geometric mean. And now what is x a geometric mean between? 27 and 36. The part it's adjacent to and the whole thing. x squared is equal to 27 times 36, 972. The opposite of squaring something is finding its square root. And you're going to get 31.18. So, W was 27, uh, W was 9, Y was 27, and X is 31.8. Okay. If I tried to find x first here, it'd have an x and a w in it. If I tried to find y first, y would be a geometric mean between 24 and 24 plus w. It would also have a y and a w in it. So what do I want to find first? I want to start with the 12, and 12 in this case is a geometric mean. If 12 is a geometric mean, it's in my proportion twice. And what is it the geometric mean between? 24 and W. Cross multiplying, 24W is equal to 144. So W is equal to 6. Now I can do either x or y. It won't matter. I'm going to do x first. x is a what? Geometric mean, so it's going to be in there twice. What is it the geometric mean between? 6 and 30. I've got to remember to add the whole thing together. Cross multiply, x squared is equal to 180. So x is 13.42. y is also a what? Geometric mean. So y goes in my proportion twice. And what fills in the other two spots? 24 and 30. Y squared is equal to 720. And when I take the square root of that, 
I get 26.83. Everybody good? Okay. Your assignment tonight is out of the workbook then. Yes? Your test on this is going to be sometime next week. And this is section 7.4, and you want 7.4 form what? G. And make sure that you do both sides. 